All right, so now we've gone over the fundamentals of Ajax. Now it's time to put it into action. Now, from this point, up to this point, I've been using just my, my local machine to open up an index.html file. Um, but now that we're gonna be running Ajax, there are some cases where it won't work on a local machine. You need a web server. So in this section and the next, I'm going to be dealing with files on my server. Um, now I have FileZilla and I'm in my, my root domain. I'm using the domain techguystaging.com and I'm gonna build in the Eduonix subdirectory. Now, to deal with um, files on a server, you could just um, build on your local machine and then just drag into FileZilla and upload them, but Notepad++ has a really nice um, FTP extension or plugin. And I'm not, sh I think that it's there by default. If I click on plugins, you see we have the MPP FTP. I'm pretty sure that it's standard on in Notepad++, but if it's not, then just um, do a Google search for it and download it and, and install it. So if I say show NPP FTP window, we get this little sidebar and I can click on profile settings, add new, and now I can enter my um, FTP information. So first it's asking us to name this going to say Eduonix and the host name is the domain the username password and then close and now when I click this little icon we can see I have this Eduonix um, menu option so if I click that it connects to my FTP and my file structure is all here and all I have to do is um, open it through here I, there's no dragging and dropping FileZilla or anything like that so if I go to my Eduonix folder it's completely empty right now so I'm gonna create some files I'm gonna create new file and this is gonna be index.html all right so I'm gonna actually Go to my snippets. Uh, where is it? Snippets. I'm going to grab this HTML structure. And I'm going to paste that in the, the index folder that's on my server and save it with Control S. So now if I go to techguystaging.com slash Eduonix. Now I have my index file, so we can just say test. All I have to do is save it and reload, and it's it's working. So this is where we're going to build in this section, and probably the next. So we have a, a an index.html file. What we're going to be doing here is I'm going to create a button and an empty div and when I click that button we're gonna we're gonna retrieve data um, from the server okay and we're gonna do this in plain text first and then in XML and then with JSON so we're gonna retrieve those three different types of of data okay so if I go to my snippets this is the div and the button I'm going to place that right in the body tags and you can see we have a div with the ID of data and inside that div is an H2 tag with the text replace this text and then we have a button which we have an on click event handler which calls a function called get data from text alright so let's save that so obviously right now it's not going to do anything but we're going to make it so that when we click this button, this text is replaced with whatever we want. All right, so the first thing I want to do is grab um, plain text. So I'm going to go to my folder and create a new file 
and I'm going to call this data.txt. Alright, so I'll open that up. Now, whatever we put in here is what we're going to retrieve. So I'll just say this text is from the data.txt file. And I'm just going to close that because we don't need that anymore. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to create this function get data from text. So I'm going to go on my head tags and create a script tag. And we want to create this function. So we'll say function uh, get data from text. And this is camel case. Every, every word should be uppercase except for the first. All right, so well, we don't need a semicolon there. We need curly braces. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is create the variable for the HTTP, I'm sorry, the XML HTTP request object. And we're going to just call that XML HTTP. All right, so that's just declaring an empty variable. So if you remember from the PowerPoint, we need to um, create the object, but we need to do it in, in um, a way for all the modern browsers and then for IE6 and under. So we're going to do that with an if statement, an if else statement. And we want to say if window dot XML request, um, I'm sorry, XML HTTP request, then, so this is, this here, all the modern browsers support it, so that's what we're going to um, check for. And if that is, if it's true, then we're going to say XML HTTP is equal to new XML HTTP request. Sorry, we need parentheses for that. All right. So else, so if this is, uh, if, if the user is an IE6 or less, then we want to say this is equal to new active X object. Okay, and inside of the parentheses, we want to put Microsoft dot XML HTTP. Okay, so now we have the object instantiated or created. Um, the next thing we want to do is check for the ready state and the status. So we're going to say XML HTTP dot on ready state change equals function. So this is a self calling function. We're going to run it right away. Uh, and then we're going to check for the status, I mean the status in the ready state. So we'll say if XML HTTP dot ready state is equal to four and um, XML HTTP dot status is equal to 200. So if you can remember, the status has it can be 200, or it could be a 404, which is an error page not found. So we're going to make sure that that's all legit. So that's all working. Now we're going to say document dot get element by ID. And the, uh, the element we want is this div with the ID of data. So we want to put in data. And then we're going to add HTML. So we're going to say enter HTML is equal to XML HTTP dot response, response text. Okay. And we, if we were doing XML, this would be response XML. All right, so the next thing we need to do is actually get and send the data. 
or I'm sorry, just get the data. So XML HTTP dot open. Okay, so in this open, we want a couple parameters. We want, I'm sorry, this needs to be all caps. We're using the get method. Um, there's get and post, but in this case, we're using get. And now we want the URL or the file um, of the, the, the text document that we want to grab the data from. In this case, it's just going to be data.txt. If this wasn't in the same folder, we'd have to also specify the folder. All right, and then we want the last parameter of true. And, and the true is actually just call, telling it that we want it to run asynchronously. And the last line of code we want is XML HTTP dot send. And this takes no parameters. Uh, if it was post, then we'd put something in here, but it's get, so we don't need it. So if we save that, and just let me double check everything. All right, so let's reload this and click. And you now you can see that it's now saying this text is from the data.txt file. So we've retrieved this without reloading the page. Okay, so that's text, that's, that's getting text. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna get XML. So we're gonna use the movies XML document that we, we used in the past. So I'm gonna upload that to my server and for that, get out of this, I'm gonna use FileZilla. So I'm gonna go to my temp files and you should have this in your programming files. Uh, I'm gonna grab movies.xml. All right, so now that's on the server. If we refresh our folder, you can see we have it right here. And this is the file. We're not gonna edit this file in any way. We're just gonna use it to grab the data. So let's see. What I'm gonna do here is change the name of the function that's called when we click it. And I'm gonna change it to get data from XML. And I'm gonna copy this function and paste it. And I'm gonna change this to XML because a lot of this stuff is the same. Um, the way we, we get the object is the same. The way we check for the ready state is the same. Um, only thing we need to edit here really is, first of all, the name of the file down here. We wanna change this to movies.xml and we wanna get rid of this, okay? So this in here is where we write what we wanna do. So what I want to do here, first of all, is create a new variable called XML data, and that is going to be equal to um, the, the response XML property. So XML HTTP dot response XML. Okay, so now we have the response um, from the movies.xml file in this variable. And the next thing I want to do is, now there's a few different ways we can get data from the XML file. Um, the, the method I'm going to use is the um, get elements by tag name method from in JavaScript. So I'm going to create a variable called movies. All right, and that's going to be equal to XML data, so that's the response XML, um, and then we're going to do dot get elements by tag name. All right, now if we look at our XML file, the elements we want to grab is the movie, each movie, so we want the movie tag name. So get elements by tag name, and then we're going to put in movie. Now when we got data from the text file, we actually put the response right into the div. And we're not gonna do that here. We're gonna build up an output variable and then we're gonna output that into the div instead. So under this, I'm gonna say 
variable variable output. All right, so that's just an empty variable, and we want to build it up. Um, the main thing I want to do here is loop through them and display all the movie titles, um, but I also want to show you how to just output one value if we want. So I'm going to say output plus equals. Now plus equals just means we're adding on to the variable. So we're adding on to, to this, okay? And we can do this as, as much as we want. Um, and we're going to say movies movies and let's grab the first one so that'd be zero you know this from um, arrays so movies zero dot get element by tag name and what we want to grab I'll grab the title now we need to do another zero here because we're grabbing the first title, the first tag, the first title tag content. So we got to do dot first child dot node value. And I know that looks a little intimidating, but it's just grabbing the um, the first child with the content of the first title tag and the value, which is node value. Um, so next line we're going to do document dot get element by ID and we want it's going to be in the data the data div and we want to insert HTML or content so H inner HTML and that's going to be um, I'm sorry, we don't want the parentheses. We want inner HTML equals output. All right, so if we save that, let's reload this page. And when we're not getting anything, I'm gonna look at the console. All right, so object has no method, get element by tag name, line 35. Put movies get element by tag name title. Huh. This should be working. XML movies XML. All right, guys, I'm going to pause this real quick. All right, so the issue is that I have get element by tag name. It's supposed to be get elements by tag name. So make sure that S is in there. So now it should work. All right, so we're getting undefined and then the godfather. Um, and the reason for that is we're just creating a variable here with no input. Uh, I'm sorry, no output. So I'm just gonna equal this to nothing, an empty string. So that should clear up that undefined. Yep. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to output all of the titles instead of just one. So we're going to do this a little differently. We have to create a loop. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to comment out this line that outputs that gives us just that one movie title. And I'm going to create a loop. So I'm going to say for. I'm going to say for variable um, i. So we're creating. Actually, we don't need the var. So we'll just say i equals zero. And we want i as long as i is less than movies dot length. And i plus plus okay so then actually I'm just gonna gra I'm gonna grab this right here because we're pretty much we're doing the same thing we just want to replace the zero the static zero with the dynamic variable I 
and that should do it for us. Um, actually, I want it to be a list. I think. Do we want a list? Yeah. So let's say variable output, and let's put in a ul tag here. We want to make sure it's before the loop, okay? And then after the loop, we're going to have a closing ul tag, and then we're going to have we're going to make the output surrounded in lists tags. So we're going to say li, and then concatenate, and then do the same thing in the back. Closing tags. All right, so that should do it. Let's save that, reload, and if we click get data, nothing happens. All right, cannot read property first child of undefined. Okay, let's see, first. Um, movies. Get elements by tag name, title. Oh, this needs to be a zero, not an I. All right, so let's save that. And we get nothing. Huh. All right, guys, I'm going to, um, oh, no, that's not it. All right, I'm going to pause this and check this out real quick. Okay, the problem is we have this var here. We shouldn't because we're just redeclaring the variable. So to get rid of that, and that's not it. Did I do it somewhere else? Variable output. Actually, this has single quotes. Let's try changing these quotes to single. I don't know if that's going to matter, but it's worth a shot. Nope. Get rid of this comment. Um. Oh, I see it. We have output equals um, the UL tag, we need to have this be plus equals because we're adding it on to the output. So now that should definitely work. Sorry about that. All right, so now we have all the titles. Um, we're running out of time in this video, so the next thing I want to do is JSON, but I'm not going to type it all out because it'll take too long. Um, I'm just going to get the snippet and then I'll just explain it which there really isn't too much to explain. It does the same exact thing as the XML. So uh, let's paste that in. All right, so this is all the same, and this is where it's different. So we're creating a variable. Um, we created an XML data up here is equal to response XML. Uh, there is no response JSON, so we need to use this method, json.parse and we're going to parse it's going to be the response text okay um, movies is equal to json data dot movies uh, everything else is pretty much the same outputting is a little easier because we don't need to do this node value and get elements by tag name uh, all we need to do is add add this here this movies i dot title so this is a much easier method and that's why JSON is preferred now over XML when doing stuff like this. Um, so the only other difference here is we changed to movies.json, which I haven't uploaded yet. I'm going to do that now. Movies.json. And let me just go over that real quick. Uh, all it is is a J JSON object. And in that object, we have an array called movies. It's an array because we have these brackets, and each array value is a movie object. All right, so um, that's it, really. So let's try that out. Make sure I saved it. Uh, well, we need to change this here to JSON. 
All right, so let's save that and make sure that works. All right, so that's working. So that's how you can use Ajax to get text, XML, and JSON.